Just make sure sounds are good. All right, sounds look good. Everything looks good on our end. Let's make this big screen. All right. Give me just a few more seconds to prep everything I need to prep. Should be charged enough. Music up and going here. Okay. As you can see, we already got Fu House costume. We're gonna go through here. We got some things we gotta do here. Let's go ahead and check this real fast. Chocolate went up. I bought the chocolate. We're not going to touch the day and claim console so they go up. And it said. Sugar. Okay, we should buy this now. Well, that's cheap. And then we'll sell it when it gets up. All right, <clears throat> so we got to do the infinite abyss first. What is it? Summon entities deal. Oh, it was it's going to. Oh, is this one, huh? Okay. I should have a full charge here. If anything happens, I'll just kind of let when it comes down to it. All right, here we go. Burst mode. Go through and destroy this. I actually can't hear in game sound just because, like, without headphones, if I hear in game sound, it tends to mess things up a bit. There we go. Jip real fast. Grab everything in. Rebuild energy. And then back into her. Back in her burst mode. Where you at? 
Oh, okay, we gotta do this one, okay. Hey, grab everything. There we go, and in burst mode. Let's add it. Throw our javelin at it. And go into burst mode again. Into burst mode, and he's dead. Alright, so first phase is done, easy enough. Next phase. That's quantum, isn't it? Yeah. I have a feeling this last one's gonna be, uh. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling it's gonna be Thelema. Alright, here we go. In here. There you go. We definitely want to have that boost up. Pop our elf early. The only thing I like about her sure of. Uh, Rebirth is that it's really hard to use. Like her rotations are just so clunky. I don't know why they made her so clunky, but it really is. Her ultimate costs a lot to use too, and it's just like not really good for that cost. Okay. 
I love Zayla though. I just wish it was uh I wish it was as smooth as the other ones do to be honest. I mean her ultimate's really good. But trying to get that offense is what's rough. Save her older for the last phase. the red ghost. Wait, what? Attack the blue ghost. Alright. I'm done with this. <clears throat> I attacked the red ghost. That was bullshit. Got ultimate up again. When she comes out, man, you see the damage that hits up, like, the last two boss, like, did hard as any that's just, like, they go down like water because of her short rebirth's ultimate, man. I love her, it's just I wish her, it was easy to get her ultimate off in that setup. But her QT just doesn't get up as often. Alright. Okay, so someone's running that team. I want to take this one real quick. I'm going to clear this real fast. I always like clips one first, just because it makes that final one a little easier to know what your final score is. Alright. Here we go. Now we're not going to actually do ultimates, any ultimates here yet. I 
right, in here again. Pop this up again. This baby going up. One, two, and three. Switch back over. Okay. Back in now. Pitch up. I'm gonna pop this one now. Pop this real quick. Pop into him. This ultimate. All right, here we go. One, two, and three. Our right, damage drops up real quick. There we go. Get him in. And jump over. Who almost jump over? Huh. Okay, let me try this. Okay, that's just weird. There we go. Finally, let me blossom with the cannon. Now we got all the time we need here, so we don't need to actually be popping any ultimates here. We need to just build up our ultimate energy here. There you go. There you go. Okay, this one's going in. Pop 
You right away. Up that. Okay, go in. Over. There we go. This guy's screwed now. Like he's just doing damage at that point. That was that was a good ending there. All right. So the first three easy ones are done. Now to finish the ch the one that we got to beat in time. But that does give us these rewards. Let's see where we're ranking at the moment. Are we at zero? Yeah, we're at zero. So we need three five five eight to get number one, or three five five nine. There we go. I'm really worried about getting number one, to be honest. There we go, grab these guys, break their shields. Can't get shields for a second here. And I was gonna destroy them real fast. Broke their Morse, good. There we go. Now it's time to do the damage. Boom. Dead.
Dude, that's gonna get me in the top. I scare you. There you go. Number two. I'm fine with that. That means I'm gonna get zero. I'm not gonna lose anything. It's good. All right. Now we got the realm Legion realm challenge. Oh, not this one yet. We got. Ooh, this one we gotta do. Okay, let's see. At least Stardust, right? So it should be best with. Oh, did I already use that team though? Maybe I didn't. I did use this team. So you know what I do? Take this team. Yeah. Like damage. Here we go. Guy down. <laughs> that was easy enough. <laughs> That one's done. We got one more thing to do. Well, two more things to do. My nose is killing me, man. Alright, finalize you. Okay, next. It's Realms of Battle. We clear this. Legion Realms is going to be the last thing we do. Okay, we should be getting close to our bar up, which would be good. Oh, we don't even need it. Alright, next stage. Ah, oh, that's a good stage. Let me use my characters. There we go. Look at that. That's so much better. Oh. Still better. Okay.
All right, next one, you. The British must be on the team. Where's mommy nanny? Nanny mommy. There she is. Yeah, she looks so tired. <coughs> Alright, next one. Here we go. I think I still need one more of her sticks before she's done. She's one of the few characters I don't have finished yet. That I care about. Funny thing is, I didn't really do co-op that much, but I actually do this. Taking out co-op was probably the best thing they could do. Co-op was so boring. Was it long enough to make worthwhile? <laughs> Alright, here we go. Next round. There we go. Okay, that's what we gotta do, okay. Oh my ass, get my characters. There we go.
<sighs> and here's the end of this round. Alright. Okay. One more thing to do here. And that's this one here. I don't think it's a fighting one. Probably just... So we gotta dodge some crap. Yep. Oh, sweet. It's gonna whack a mole, man. I'll take whack a mole. Whack a mole! <sighs> there we go. Oh yeah, we got this one. I gotta go take care of some stuff real quick. I'll be right back. We'll move on to the next phase. Once I click out of this. There we go. I do need to take these real fast. What I need to do is I need to go and use... Hey, Nero! How you been, man? Oh, yeah, I forgot I got these. Um, like that. I'm going to be right back. I got to go shut the... Do some things real fast. It'll be like less than a minute. So I'll be right back. So just give me, give me a few seconds to be right back.
prep things up for the day, for the, I thought this time I gotta do some stuff real quick. Doesn't take too long. I'm back. Ugh, how are your holidays? What have you been doing for holiday? I'm in some position back in a space where it covers everything. <sighs> Got that. Very nice. Yeah. God, dude, I do not miss exams. I'm not going to lie. Exams sucked ass. Where you at? There you are. <sighs> Ooh. Double S, Rita? Ooh, nice. Dude, man, like, I, I, I'm... S I, I still believe to this day, at finishing college, it's not about the education, at least not in the beginning, right? In the end it is. But in the beginning, it's not about education, it's just about, do you have the uh, endurance, pretty much. Hmm. <sighs> All right, Legion Realm. Can I take? All right, let me, let me just real quick. I forget. Uh, do you play Star? Or I forget. Uh, did you get, did you get Acheron? Bro, I really hope you got Acheron, man. Bro, Acheron, so, I don't know if you finished the story or not. Since you're playing, I'm not going to tell you. But, uh, I will tell you this. There is a huge, huge, yeah, I'm going to be honest, all my friends pulled her, man. I can't, I, I can't think of any friend I have that didn't pull her. Even I, I actually even pulled her on my free-to-play account and her light code on my free-to-play account. I logged in on my U.S. account and played, like, hard, farmed hardcore and pulled both her and her light code on my U.S. account. So, like, that account's good to go. Um, and then I just got Rob and her light code. I actually, there is so much currency we got during the anniversary that I had enough that I lost 50-50 to adventuring, so I knew... Um, so I knew I would get whoever's next, right? I was like at 75 and, but I didn't want to get Robin without her light cone. So I was pulling on her light cone cause I still the wind at uh, 75 and I got it. If I lost the light cone, I would not be summoning until Sam. Cause I don't want a character without their light cone when they need it, you know? And I think it's a free to play player. That's how you do it a free to play player, right? If you lose the 50, 50 on a character, you go for the light cone, and you kind of build up your pity. Your, you build up your character pity, right, to about the seventy spot, right? Because it's not usually going to drop before seventy. So if you're like about a ten, a, a ten pulls from getting the character, right, and then you start putting up that L, L, the light cone pity up. Of course, you still have that RNG where you might pull something which is going to be frustrating as hell. But if you don't, it works really well. Let's see. Um, Oh, they, made, they changed the boss to be Stardust? Oh, shit. Okay, let me think here. I want to take my character. So we're going to take this. I could run her, but I want to run. Dude, I love... Dude, fucking look. Look how goddamn beautiful she is, dude. Look at this. Bro, nice. Ganton was a bitch to me. I got Nave. I got her weapon. Did you get Nave at least? Please tell me you got Nave. I mean, if you didn't get Nave. Oh, okay, good. I, well, I didn't know if it was like you pulled her weapon early, but you didn't have her, right? Dude. One of my friends, 
was told that Nave was worse than Hu Tao. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Nave is so much better than Hu Tao. Nave gets a, gets a passive 400 pyro damage buff. Like, you can run her with an attack goblet if you have Zhang Mi on the team. Like, there is no, like... Yeah. Dude, I fell in love with I fell in love with Nave. I'm not gonna lie. I fell in love with that girl. I was I was like I was like when I saw her I was like, God damn, she's so cool. And of course I lost the 50-50. But I, I did get her. I got her to C6. I C6 her. I rarely will C6 character in Genshin, okay? But I'm just gonna tell you. I have been. Oh, oh, dude, Fufua, dude, Fufua is amazing. I have been waiting for a scythe user in um, Genshin for so long, and Nave was just so perfect. I was like, yeah, I've, I've got it, and I did end up C sixing her. Ah, oh, these are not that good. Um, which one do you want to take? Uh, you know what? Let's keep. Let, we're gonna restart this. That's a bad start. I don't want that start. That's a bad start. There's literally no 50-50 on this. So I want to start this right. Uh, I will say this character is better than Nave. I'll tell you one reason why. I'm not going to switch. I'll play Weathering Waves, but I'm not going to quit Genshin. Because honestly, Genshin doesn't require much time. Genshin is literally, what, 15 minutes of gameplay and you're done. You actually can play both games, realistically. Because Genshin has no fucking in-game content, you can play both games. Like, my biggest issue with Genshin is like... Oh yeah, I play on PC, right? And PS5. My biggest issue with Genshin is, the fuck am I gonna do now that i finished, like, my stamina? But, you know, I think Genshin is worried because they are creating a new weekly content. That is a sign that they're worried, but... Oh, by the way, this character is way better than Nave. Do you wanna know why? <gasps> Fuck! I did not mean to do that. I'm gonna show you why this character is way better than Nave, okay? Since I fucked that up. I cannot believe I did that. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Yo, man, you're not... I'm pretty hard to offend. If it's why I'm not bald, well, it's genetics. Can't help that. Why I haven't shaved here? It's because my razor broke, which fucking sucks. If it's why I'm not fat, it's because I'm Norwegian. Let's not fuck this up this time. Dude, you can ask whatever you want, man. Like, seriously, I'm not going to be offending. Like, I only get offended if that is the intent, right? Like, if the intent is to offend, then I get offended. But I never get offended if just, like, due to a question because, like, dude, dude. you never gonna know if you don't ask. I need some supports over though. <laughs> Bro, do you want to know the truth? She doesn't fucking know. I work seven days a week, and I'm gonna be perfectly honest. She, we have so much money in the bank, but she takes it and then says we have nothing. Like, she always acts like we're fucking broke. And then I find out we have, like, $40,000 in the bank. And I'm like, the fuck? Like, you're telling me we can't afford food. You can't afford to pay your mom, but we have $40,000 in the bank? What the fuck are you... So, um, pretty much, I'm going to say it this way, right? And she has decided that... For her, poor is not having like $100,000 in the bank. 
And I don't want to live like that. So pretty much, she doesn't fucking know. And we keep it that way. I'm gonna be honest, this is gonna be a really- This is gonna be a real asshole thing I say. Yeah, I work 70s week, man. I work today as well. This is gonna be a real asshole thing I say, but I'm an, I'm an asshole and I'll admit it. Dude, my wife's not very intelligent when it comes to things. Like, I- I spent... 10 years, because we've been there for 10 years, trying to explain the health issues with always getting angry. Oh no, it's uh, it's 5 right now. It's 5 o'clock right now. But I've always tried to explain the health issues to her about getting angry all the time, because she would just get really angry, like pissed off, like really badly. And nothing ever changed. And then I had to fucking do something that was... She's she's a very... Uh, what's a term? Um, superstitious? I had to do some stupid-ass superstition shit, and she finally started listening. Now, I would not... To be perfectly honest, I would never do that if I didn't have to. But I really had my hands tied. It was like, I tried everything. And she just never fucking listened, and she was always yelling and screaming. Which is typical... Now, by the way, I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm gonna give you some advice. Never, ever, ever marry a Japanese woman. Avoid... Like, date them is fine, but do not fucking marry them. They're the... I don't know how Chinese are, but I will tell you that they are the fucking worst to wear marry. And it's not that all of them are gonna be like this, but it is such a problem that we see it... I've, I've seen it all the time. Like, I have a co-worker's wife in Japanese, I've been married for five years, has almost the exact same problems I have. So, you know, just my advice, date them is great, do not marry. Once you marry them, they fucking change. So, to be honest, she doesn't know. I've always been very good at keeping part of my money secret because that's, you know, I, I work my ass off, man. I mean, yeah, I work seven days a week. I work, I have a part-time job on the Monday and on the mornings, Monday through Friday, which is my old job. We went back in the mornings and that is about, um, Dude, yeah, my advice, always finish your life first. Get your life set up first. And whatever you do, do not come to Japan and marry for a visa. It's one of the worst things you can do. I did that my first time. And it literally puts you under somebody else's thumb. Don't, don't do that. Make sure you, if you ever travel somewhere and go overseas, make sure you go on your own terms. And, um, and this time was on my own terms. But I mean, like, even after we married, we changed to a spouse visa. Just because it made it so much easier for work-related issues. And I still had to deal with, like, my status being at risk because of that. That was until three years. If you're married for three years in Japan, you can get your permanent residency visa, which I now have. So, I can stay in Japan. As long as I follow the laws, I pay my taxes, I can stay in Japan indefinitely. I have nothing to worry about. So... But yeah, no, they just, my, my advice, and honestly, that's what I'm telling you, man, like, okay. If you want to know the secret to actually having a good marriage, unless you have, like, the most amazing wife who thinks just like you, you're gonna have to fucking hide shit. You're gonna have to fucking, you're just gonna have to learn how to, you're gonna have to learn how to do white lies because they will, women love to play fucking mind games, bro. I'm like, I'm gonna be honest. And I don't even think half the time they know they're doing it. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of times, I think that they don't realize they're doing it. I would, I would never fucking marry an otaku. Never. Never marry an otaku. At least not a Japanese otaku. Otaku is not a really good thing here. If someone's an otaku in Japan, it means they don't work. They just sit there and rely and, and do nothing for money, pretty much. Which means you're going to be taking care of them. I'm not gonna lie to you, like, me. I'm, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I'm, like, crazy attracted to Yon today. Like, that's... I don't know what it is, dude, but that, that shit's, like, fucking... The hottest thing for me. I'm like, god damn, dude. I love psycho chicks. <laughs> you gotta remember, though. Otaku in the West and Otaku in Japan are two different otakus, right? So, it is a different thing. I would say, if you're gonna marry somebody... You need to marry... I would say marrying a Japanese who is huge into Latin culture is really good. 
um, who loves Western culture, who is huge into Western culture, is really good. Marrying somebody who's Japanese who just wants a white husband or white kids is not that good. And that's kind of the issue, right? Like, when I married my wife, I didn't realize that's what it was. And it was a lot of fighting. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of fighting going on. But I finally got control of the relationship, and I have control of it now, which is good. Because now things are really peaceful. Ah, oh, well, I am being... Dude, I'm being specific. I'm, I'm not saying that because I'm what? I'm serious. That's a thing that they do here. They want that half-white baby. Not saying that all Japanese are only white people, though. I've seen plenty of Japanese married to African Indian married to black people. I don't know if they're... I don't want to say African American because I don't know where they're from, to be honest. Um, you know. I don't know how it works for, for Hispanics, since you're both kind of the same skin tone. <laughs> You know? But I would say, like, I mean, like, um, for me personally, I think, like, just if you meet someone who's interested in the Western culture, right, they're not going to care about your skin tone. All right? Does that make sense? They're into Western culture, not white people. That's what I'm saying. Don't marry somebody who just wants to have a white baby. Luckily, you're not white, so don't got to worry about that. You want someone who's into actual Western culture. That's going to be the person who's, like, you know, you're going to be like, okay, this person is someone I can actually connect with. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah, we got to change this over now. We got to take our, we're going to go for the, co we got to go for combos now. Bodhi. Do you have any Bodhis here? Oh, we do. Perfect. There's a Bodhi. Do you have any other Bodhis? Alright, that's it. We're not going to use any of our shit. By the way, what makes this character better than the Knave? She can't die. This character cannot die in the game. You will not die. I'm not... Like, I'm not just talking lore-wise. I mean, literally, one of her abilities is she can't die. I will show it to you out of this match. It is the greatest thing ever, dude. I once did it on Axe, I was like, wait, what the hell just happened? And I thought that it was uh, maybe just something to do with the Elysian Realm. No, it's in her fucking kit, dude. So she loses her HP, and she gains with an ultimate, but she also can't die. She literally is immortal, which makes sense with her story. It's like, it's something that is so powerful, I didn't think that they would have actually put it in the game, but they did, and I'm just so happy about it. I actually double S'd her because I liked her that much. And I this will probably when I triple S when I can. Whenever her banner's up, I will probably try to triple S her. When she hits the battle pass, oh, I'll definitely be ground her parts. Uh, Kalis Harmony. Um... Wait, wait, wait. Wait, what's wait, wait, Kayla's harmony? Can you... I probably know, but for some reason I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Like bills for Kayla's harmony. What is Kayla's harmony? I know I've heard it. I know I've heard that. This is what's first thing. I know I've heard it. Star, okay, okay. Kayla's harmony. Oh, 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 that's why. Yeah, okay, there it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, okay, I got it, got it. Alright, so, because he is a break character, I'm gonna be honest, do you have Rue on me? Okay, so since you don't have Rue on Mei, by the way, next time Rue on Mei drops, wait, do you have Black Swan? What about Black Swan? I always forget. You might have told me, I might have forgotten, to be perfectly honest. But Black Swan. Okay. So the two characters you're going to want to pull are Ruan Mei and Black Swan when they come back. Until Ruan Mei comes back, um, the MC is a discount Ruan Mei, pretty much. But Ruan Mei is so good for Acheron builds, for Acheron teams. Um, it's not even funny. 
But yeah, I will actually... The build that I would go for um, the MC, Harmony MC, is uh, as much break as possible. Because the thing about him, right, is that he's a break buffer. And I, you can easily get... Um, what is it like? 200 break damage on him? Easy, you can easily get 200 plus break damage on him. So I do two-piece, two-piece break set, okay? Because he does not cast his ultimate on your teammates. His ultimate actually is a, kind of a, is on the enemy, right? So I would go two-piece of the break sets, the uh, trick set and the newer set. And then your chain, make sure your chain is break effect. And as much break effect as possible using the effect resistance set. So if you have that 40 effect resistance, which you should have as well, because this is a fort, you are also going to be getting the 10% crit damage buff as well. That's what I would go for. Also, if you do not have Fu Xuan, she is dropping. I would personally summon for Fu Xuan. There should be more than enough in-game currency to earn to get just a copy of Fu Xuan by herself without needing her light cone. You don't need her light cone, you just need Fu Xuan, but... If worst case scenario, I would summon and risk the 50-50 risk the on her. And if you lose it and you don't get her on the 50-50, then just hold off till Sam, right? Because if you win the 50-50 and you get her, then you really will be fine. It's more if you uh, lose the 50-50 than go for it, you're probably not getting sent. But if you risk the 50-50 and you get her... Um, but Fu Xuan... Think about Fu Xuan is she's a straight up 12% crit rate and damage reduction just for existing. She's the only defensive unit that will buff your defenses, but also give you offensive builds too. She is really good for that reason. Um, which is why I do suggest taking her. Oh shit, we're gonna get a triple one? No, this is a single. Um, Black Swan is also a must. For Acheron... Black Swan is the best nihility support for Akron. Because what Black Swan does, okay? When you pop... Well, you, you, okay, you need an E1 Black Swan for this, to be honest. But Black Swan pops a crap ton of debuffs on the enemy. That's the first thing. The second thing one is if you get E1 Black Swan, which again, if is possible, right? What ends up happening is... Whenever she pops elemental debuffs, whenever it gets like a dot, they... That resistance goes down. And so... With that, there's that. The other thing you can do, and I also would suggest this. There's a couple options you can make here. If you're pure free to play, I will tell you, C6 Acheron, or E6 Acheron, is worth saving for. E6 Acheron is so fucking disgusting that if you have an E6, if you save up for her to come back and you just save all your stones when she comes back around and just pull her... You're going to have the only DPS you'll probably need for the next couple of years. They're going to, have to do so much to make Acheron no longer the best DPS in the game. That is how good she is at C6. Because you got to remember, right? At C6, all of her attacks count as an ultimate, which means all of her inbuilt buffs that buff ultimate damage now affects her skill and her normal attack. And her normal attack and skill break. Uh, can do we break regardless of, re of weakness. It's... F if you save up... If you're like, you know what? I want to have the most broken DPS in this game. Shh. Yeah, I will. Bro. You have no idea how good my luck was. I lost the 50-50 twice. That was it. And I don't mean twice on her. Between getting her and her R5 weapon. I R5 her weapon in C6 there. I spent maybe $600. Now, if you take a look at that. Actually, sorry. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. So it's $100. Let's see. Let's, let's calculate that real fast. Let me pull up my calculator here. Give me a second here. That's 6 of the 80 of the 5 multi, right? 50 multi tops. Okay, so 50 times 6. Yeah, dude. I literally C6 R5 dirt in 300 tickets. Maybe, maybe 450, 500 max. C6 R5. 
So it is enough. Because you got to realize, right, you need at least five copies of her. If you have to go to hard pity, you have to go to 80 every time and you win the 50-50 every time, 400 tickets. And if she comes back, say, well, let's just take that 400 tickets, right? That 400 tickets would be, because um, that'd be 40 multis. So times 160, 64,000 crystals. Let's say she comes back in about six months. And then we got a minus, let's see. Oops, no, no, no. Times that by six. We're going to say, let's say minus six, minus one more time. Oops, nope. And minus again. Divide that by six. Let's say she comes back in six months. You can save, easily save up 10,000 crystals a month. I mean, that's actually pretty easy. That's, that's pretty easy. You could save up enough to get her to C6. Now, it is going to take luck, right? But even if you don't C6 her, if you get her to C4, she's still fucking insane at C4. C4 is crazy because now she's throwing down another fucking debuff just for existing. Which means her C1 ability is always procced because of her C4 ability. It's fucking hilarious. So, if I was a pure free-to-play player, right? After seeing how good her C6 is, I would not summon on any other character until she came back. I would C6 her ass, and I would use the discount, everything else fucking discount. I would use Bronya for my support. I would use um, whatever the fucking discount Nihility character is for Nihility. And I would use um, a discount tank or a healer. Because, like, straight up, the amount of damage that she does at C6 is insane. And the fact that she just breaks everything is really crazy, too. Again, it takes luck. I mean, if you get lucky and you win every single 50-50, you're going to have her there. If you don't win every 50-50, yeah, I mean, like, you're not going to, you know, really have her there. But, I mean, like, C4 is still really good. And Steve, C4 is very, you know, yeah, I imagine, right? You went for that weapon. That could have been a C1 um, Acheron. And I doubt you'd saved all you've been saving for six months, right? Which means that, like, if you got could pull two copies in what you'd saved before she came back around, I mean, like, you could easily get at least another three copies when she comes back if you, if you were saving the whole time which would be c4 which means your next round is much easier to get so i mean like when i see six zhong li it was i'll be honest it was three rotations i waited to see six him i've never regretted holding off and skipping units to see six zhong li never because that was back when i was really like i wasn't spending money now again to be fair I did win my 50-50s. I had a lot of good luck. I mean, like, it wasn't like I had saved an amazing amount. I just really had a lot of good luck there. Dickwad. But, pretty much, the thing to remember is that at C1, you get 18% crit rate if the character has a debuff, right? At C2, you only need one Nihility character to get the full buff, not two. At C4, her being on the field gives him a debuff, which um, I'm almost throwing. Gives him a debuff which reduces their ultimate resistance. All right. So that's why it becomes so good, because now they're permanently debuffed. C5 and C. You know, three are just kind of meh, because they're what they are. But then C6 is the big one. But there's no bad constellation on her, in all honesty. Like, 
it, if you could, if, if you don't see six or the next time she comes, did you get like to C four, or even C three? There's like no bad constellation on her. She is just good. There you go. And then I would, whenever I can, get the battle pass, right? And the benefit of getting her constellations is you don't have to build her. She's already built. You don't have to do all that fucking work. Ugh. Alright. Okay, one second here. I'm gonna show you this. What makes Fuhua better than the Knave? Let me show you this. Let's go find... Let's find her beautiful self. Come on, you are. Come on, my beautiful girl, you. You're hurting, so you should be over here. Gotta find her. Uh, where is she at? Oh, here you go. This is insane. I'll get her passives. Let's see. This character cannot die. Automatically triggers rekindle. When HP drops to zero, recovers 30% of max HP and then enters Cinder State for 30 seconds. Which reduces damage by 50% and lose 1 SP per second. But you can't die. <laughs> it's great. And I don't think there's actually any of the skills that I unlock at triple S. I think they're just buffs. So that was kind of why I wanted to get her to double S because that was when all her skills unlocked. If you look here, like it's just raises cap, raises cap. Raise this cap. Raise this cap. Yeah, no, dude. I actually got her costume too, because this is what her, this is what she's supposed to look like. Like, I like both her looks, but like, god damn, dude, that's so fucking beautiful. So I did get the costume. I know. I'm a horrible person. Um. Oh yeah, this is uh for cosmic expression for Skywalker. Dude, I love her looks, man. This, But I hate these costume things. Like, these are so bad. They're fucking horrible. They're the worst thing ever. I'm not gonna lie. They're fucking horrible. Alright, here we go. I'm just building pity here. Because I pulled a copy of her. I'm not, I'm not too upset. I want to build pity up. PGR is pretty good. I do have PGR, actually. I do play that one some. Dude, I got the girl with the white hair. Like, I got the newest version of her with, like, the big-ass fucking twin swords. I, I got her fully built. So much fun. PGR. Okay, so here's my thing about PGR, right? PGR has a great pity system. Like, I mean, great banner system. Like, PGR banners are fucking awesome. Like, I'm not gonna just... I'm not gonna joke around about it. Like, they're good. They're really, really good. The problem with PGR, in my opinion, okay is it's not evolving at the same speed as Honkai Impact 3rd. And Honkai Impact 3rd is very similar to it. But Honkai Impact 3rd is evolving into the way they do things, where the game feels totally different. PGR still feels like Honkai Impact 3rd around... Um, around the Kevin... around uh, Not the Kevin... Around the um, Auto Apocalypse Saga. Okay, which was a good saga, but what e Impact Third feels like now in comparison is very different. It's not quite as op as open world as Genshin, right? But it's much more open now, and PGR is just at this point, it's it still feels too mobile. They really need to do something with PGR. They need to open it up. Because those characters, and P like, honestly, dude, PGR characters are really cool. I like them. And, um, give me a second here. Get your here real quick. See this fixed. Give me a second. I'm going to fix this real quick. I got to fix this real quick. Apparently, I did not put my green screen on. Green screen. What did I think? There we go. All right. Give me a second here. Um, so. Give me a second. I'm switching games. I probably got to actually update PGR to be honest. I started PGR because they finally put on PC. Uh, 
Oh, oh, solo leveling. What the fuck's it called? Second, I'll look up the name. Arise. Solo leveling arise. Yeah, dude, I'm switching games. That's why. Solo leveling arise, right? Dude, no, I did. I didn't like it. I tried it today. Actually, I tried it today. The first thing I take a look at is pity is is the banners. And those banners. First of all, it's by Net Marble. If you know anything about Net Marble, Net Marble is one of the worst gotcha game companies out there. I'm gonna tell you why. Now, they do seven daily sins. When Seven Daily Sins started, okay, it was really good. But then they just started changing things. And it got really bad until the Seven Daily Sins community threw a big fucking tantrum about it. Because they were regularly, regularly. Oh, new banner, new banner, new banner. And the problem was that people could not keep up with the new banners. It became a game you had to summon in. And it wasn't until. People just said, pretty much, I remember what happened. Literally, and this is the one, one of the few times I've seen this happen. The whales came together and said, we are not going to support your game anymore. And when I took a look at Solo Leveling Arise, Netmarble was a big flag. Now, I do play Seven Daily Sins. I like that game. But... And they did fixing in Seven Daily Sins. Like, Seven Daily Sins, you get enough currency. You can pull at least one copy. You can hit Max Pity on every single festival banner. If you skip the mid banners and you go for every single festival banner, you can actually get one copy of every fest unit. Okay, you can. Which is a huge jump from what they were doing. But, when I went to Soul Leveling Arise, it's a 1.5% chance to pull a high rank character. And the currency you earn is so bad because it's 2,500 you need. Like, with 70 cents, it's 30, right? I can easily, I know, okay, this is gonna give me one. I know exactly how many things I gotta clear. When they do like 2,500, and, and I hate this about Impact Third, I'm gonna be honest. This is my pet, one pet peeve about Impact Third is at 2,800 gems. It's too hard to calculate how much you need. It's a fucking ridiculous number. Just make it basic, right? Make it fucking 30 multi, 10 multi, right? 10 tickets, whatever. Get rid of the currencies. Have you get fucking tickets. And I really hate the double banners. I fucking hate when they do double banners. I do. I don't mind it so much in Home Impact 3rd because the dorm banner is really just there for two summons a week. It's not the banner. The banner doesn't even focus so much. And I'm going to be honest... I kept getting hit with non-stop fucking pay advertisements. It was just like, pay for this, pay for this. And one more thing. If there's one thing a gotcha game can do that will make me not play that game, and I fucking hate this, and the Devil May Cry game fucking did this, it is to do the, uh, um, you can summon it as many times as you want until you get the summon you want, get the five star you want, right? So you get the five star you want, and then it's like, okay, now you gotta buy it. Oh, pay this amount of money, you can have it. I was like, are you fucking kidding? And they did that. I was pissed off. I was like, first of all, I'm gonna guarantee five every time. Second of all, I now gotta pay ten fucking dollars to get the, like, come on. And to put that in, like, have you tried Outlander yet? Like Outlander Overworld. Let me take a look at the. Let me take exactly what the game's called. Oh, I'm sorry, Outer Plane. Have you tried Outer Plane? They just released on JP. So, but it just has a global thing too. Have you tried Outer Plane? Yeah, I saw that in Soul Leveling. This was kind of my, my major fuck you to Soul Leveling when they did that. Outer Plane literally has a starter banner, four featured five stars, and you just summon over and over and over to get the one five star you want and the four stars you want, and it gives it to you. It's like, there you go. You don't pay for it. it just gives it to you. And Outer Plane has some, If it's a, it is a turn-based RPG, but it's like more like 70 cents, not like Star Row. Um, it's a little bit different. It's, it's, it's a different kind of a, that, that style of RPG, so it is different enough. 
But the thing is that, while the rates aren't that good, I've gotten so many fucking tickets to summon that game that I've got like a, about six or seven five star units. Because the, the, the starting banner, and there's the starting welcoming missions are just boom, throws everything on. And, you know, like, and then, like, I mean, again, like, you know, you have the ones, like, with Seven Nights, right? Seven Nights 2. Dude, Seven Nights 2 is such a cool fucking game. It's just the gameplay is not there. If they had made that an actual fucking, like, actually made that controller compatible and not an, an AFK RPG, right? Made that an actual RPG. Bro, I would be fucking insane in that game. I would be spending money in that game. My only be beef with Seven Nights is it's a fucking AFK RPG. And I'm like, I'll just watch a movie. Or let's play. Because the games, the animations are cool. The characters are cool. And it's like, but I can't control it. And it, that's, that irritates me. And I drop a lot of AFK. Or, and I'll try AFK RPGs, but I almost drop them almost regularly within a week because of that. All right. So to answer your question real quick, let's find my character here. Now, if you didn't know, the clocky statue will give you your idolins, at least five of the four of them. So make sure to do the clocky statue to get their idolins at level 50. You'll get all these. Light code wise. Memories of the past. Remember, you want his um, break attack to be up. Whenever the wearer attacks, additionally regenerates 8 energy. This attack cannot figure So this gives a bonus 8 energy. Easy one to get to superimposition 5. Easy 8 energy plus that 56 break attack. Right? Good, because the biggest thing about him is that it's all about his ultimate, right? His ultimate's what's going to be, like, doing everything. Um, this one's really good, too. It's 15% uh, break effect. This one's kind of meh. This is pretty damn bad. But this is, this is good. This 15% bonus is good. Uh, traces... Um, this one's really good, too. The delaying is really good. I would take that. This one's really good. The passive... What is this passive? The fuck is this passive? Oh, there it is. That's support. Yeah, the extra energy is really good, especially if it's the ultimate. How much energy does the ultimate need? Oh, there you go. Yeah, that tells right there. Um, yeah, the old one's got 140, so, yeah, if you have this, it's really useful. Uh, but yeah, relics-wise, relics-wise, I am running, oh yeah, this is set I've run with him. Pretty much, we're running all break effect, right? So we got six, we get 16% break here, 16% break here, 16% break here, a break effect chain, speed boots with break effect, um, this doesn't fucking matter. I just want that break effect and speed, really. This is all I have for that set piece. This one here, again, you have more break effect. And then break effect here. And then that's the, we only got this in a, we have this in a magic already. Now. The downside is I gotta get, I, I do gotta get a speed a bit higher. See, I need to get a speed to 145. So I got to get another 7% speed at some point, which I will work on. And I'll probably be, if I'm going to replace a piece, like I can't replace this piece because I need that 8 speed. It'll probably be this here. This piece right here. My headpiece is what I'll probably end up replacing. I need a headpiece that at least has, say, where is it at? Seven speed. I'll also, if I get an attack orb, because this gonna, this also needs to be replaced too, right? Because it's not, this is not attack. This is those no, no break effect. Um, this one is world. Let me take a look at the world real quick. Oh, here it is. Uh, world four, right here. Now. Do you want me to show you? Let me think of that for a second. Now again, a big thing to think about is if you get him built up, you don't really need to worry about Ruan Mei as much. 
Um, but Ruan Mei is the superior one of them. Because Ruan Mei gives a straight up 20% break effect just for being on the field. She gets 10% speed for being on the field. And when she's pops her ultimate, you get 25% penetration. She also keeps them broken longer. And then, of course, she increases their break efficiency by 50 and gives them 32% damage bonus. Technically, 68% when you have her traces done. So, I will be honest. If you if you ever get a chance to pull Ron May, she's really good. Because she's a lot easier to run with. And she only needs 180 break effect. Like, seriously, that's all she needs. 180 break effect is all you need on her. And as you can see, I have 185. I will show you why, okay? I'm going to show you why. Let me uh, go to the simulated universe real quick. I will show you why I'm, I, I suggest pulling her. She matches up with Acheron so well, it's not even crazy. She is the best support for Acheron. So we go world seven. Let me place Robert back with. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we keep Robert on the field as long as I don't get that stupid BS one. Okay, we keep Robert on the field. Nihility. Now for this build, I'm going pure break effect stuff. I just want break effect. Like I want to be able to attack again when I get break effect. I want my break effect to be more powerful. Um. Yeah. Well, this will kill world. World. World four is easy. You can literally take whatever you want on world four. To be honest, you can take whatever you want. Acheron kills everything. Let's see. Pop you. So what I'm looking for with Nihility is the break effect and break efficiency. Okay, that's what I'm looking for here. There it is. Break effect 50%. Love it. So if we take a look here, take a look at Ruin May. Her break effect is now going to be at 255. And the thing is that, that's going to be big here because she's going to, you know, do some good damage here. Let's see. Damage boost. Damage boost. And then, of course, the C6 allows this. Literally just breaks everything. Die. Alright. But when I get to the final boss, you're going to see what I'm doing what I do. The other thing about Black Swan... Black Swan literally puts every single DOT on the enemies when you use her ultimate. Okay? So if you use Black Swan's ultimate... Um, dude, to be fair, I fucking wail in this game. I'm not going to sit here and be like, it's fucking easy, because I wail in the game. I, I mean, of course it's easy for me. I fucking wail in it. So, and I deal with those assholes in Genshin all the time where it's like, this is fucking easy. And it's like, dude, fuck off. Uh, oh, yeah, it's perfect. I'm looking for specific ones here. Ooh, this one's really good, because I get it all in... Get that right there. Perfect. Alright, let's see. First leap. Now, I'm literally... Hey, son, how are you doing? Thanks for the first time chat. So watch what happens when I go in this boss. Watch, Just watch this boss. It's fucking hilarious, Nero. Look at the boss's HP. <laughs> That's where the boss's HP is at. <laughs> This is so fun. This. Boop. Yep. And that is all thanks, really, to the mixture of Acheron with, um, oh, yes. That's thanks to Acheron and Ruan Mei. Or the double Mei combo. I don't, I'm not grabbing these this time, bro. And that's nothing, by the way. That's not even anything big. Wait till you see me get to the final boss. 
Uh, we're gonna, let's, we're gonna, oh yes, that was a good upgrade. And if you play it right, like, honestly, Simulated Universe is the hardest one, right? This is where everything matters. If you play your cards right in Simulated Universe, and don't fucking forget to, no, God, I messed it up. Okay, this could be really good, but I have to get a specific ability for that to be good. That guy's a dick. Let's see. There we go. I love this. Insta break. Oh, one second. I gotta turn off the bath. Crap. I gotta turn off the bath. Give me a second. Dude, I love having. It's kind of funny. Think about it. You got Robin and Ron made the same team and they both play instruments. Alright, sorry about that. I'm back. Alright. Oh yeah, I got our buffs up. <laughs> Alright, what we got here? Uh, I don't need to hear about these. You know, actually, this is not bad. Getting that speed boost is pretty good. Alright. This guy should be pretty much dead here. Yeah, you. Um, okay. Robin is the second best support for Acheron. Because Robin has a free light cone right now. Okay, that's first of all. And she has... She really buffs attacks a lot. Robin, if, I take a, if you take a look at Robin, here, let me take a look at Robin. If you take a look at her abilities, right? Her skill buffs everyone's damage by 40%. And that's only at level 7. It's not done yet. It's going to be higher. It's going to be like, I think around 50% for three turns. Okay? Her ultimate buffs everybody's attack by, like, I think almost 30% of hers when it's done. Plus this, plus this. It's a lot. It's a lot. And she follow and she can she follow ups with a fixed crit rate of 100% and crit damage of 150. So she will always crit when she follows up. And she reduce she removes all she gives all type resistance penetration by 24%. And then on top of that, she also gives crit damage just for existing on the field. If you I would say so, okay my rule of thumb supports are always the best. Oh shit I gotta change my game over. I didn't realize I'm still on impact third. Rule of thumb, a support character will almost always last longer than a DPS character. And with, I mean, honestly, with, oops, Acheron in the game, and Acheron being able to just fucking break everything, really re reduces future DPS's potential. And I will be honest, I do not think that, um, I don't think Sam's potential is going to be as good with Acheron in the game already. I've seen, because I, I, you can look up the characters early and they're always the right way, right? And the way Acheron, the way Sam looks is good, but not as good as Acheron is. So the thing about Akron, right? Like Akron's literally C zero, like it's like triple S at C zero. You have heard her weapon triple S. She's C zero, fucking. She's a triple S unit. So I would say getting a support is best. Fushuan is coming up. Fushuan's really good. Um, but the big thing is just like with Ruan May is insane, crazy too. Ruan Mei is the better support for her. But if your only support is Bronya, then yeah, Robin 100%. If you got Sparkle, it's a little harder to choose. But if you've only got Bronya as your support, nah, you should 100% be grabbing Robin. Oh. 
Uh, God, these are not the ones I want. Oh, that's actually good. You know, that's going to make sure I crit. If I'm going to crit, that's good. Alright. We need to get a specific buff here. I have none of my fucking buffs. Oh, shit, baskets. Alright, well, then we're going to just do this. Alright. Well, we're fast, which is good. We can get all of our buffs up in the beginning. This is gonna be funny. Actually, let's drop this first. Give him a stack. I'm lit. Oh, also, here's the best thing about Robin right here. Watch. I get to attack again. We're taking a look at her buffs, right? Like, like, look at this damage. Look at her attack. She's got 5.3k attack. 310 crit uh, damage, plus crit rate. Plus, this is an extra 18%. Because all enemies now... I forgot to show you this already. Let me see if I can find her here. All enemies get this right here. They get a debuff, which means she gets her C1 ability. So she's got, she actually has an extra 18% crit rate here, which puts her at 55, 50, that'll be 55, 63, but then she also has extra crit rate here because of the buffs, right? Like this right here, right? Or can't see it, but we got extra crit rate here that you don't see. But yeah, so she's going to crit here, and then she's also got 24% damage, 24% damage, 20% damage, 27% is uh, resistance penetration, 68% damage, 50% weakness uh, break effect, another 30% break effect, another 40% damage bonus, <laughs> another 20% break effect. Like, look at her break effect here. She's a fucking monster, man. Here we go. Supports are always the way to go. 100%. Yes. Damn, that's what I wanted. Alright, we don't want that. Okay, I gotta make sure I get my buffs this time. Thank you. Here we go. I don't know what I did, but I didn't pay attention. No, because, you know, honestly, it's it's hard to tell how good it's going to be, to be honest. You really, like, when I first started the, the when I played the uh, closed beta, I was like, eh, Bronya's, I, I was kind of like, meh with Bronya. And then I was just like, dude, Bronya's good. Bronya's really good. Now, I'm not running with the best of the builds I could have had. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I could have had so many better builds, but I did not get the pulls I wanted. One is the uh, is an ultimate where whenever I do a um, follow-up attack, or ultimate counts follow-up attacks, I also didn't buff up this one here, which I should have, which I, you know, I'm going to have to buff this up. But here we go. This is where it's going to get fucking insane. First of all, this boss has no lightning weakness, okay? No lightning weakness. Wait. <laughs> Look at his bar of health! That's his first bar! I haven't done anything! That's what he starts at! And to be honest, there are times... His whole entire bar will be gone. He'll lose his first bar without me even doing anything. We're gonna wait a second here. And then we're gonna pop you. Go into our ultimate here. Here we go. 
And then here's where it gets good. This is hilarious. Watch this. This is why I love harmony units. And this is the thing about I have heard E1 for a reason. When she gets E1, you see this. If we take a look here at the enemies. He has lightning resistance down. So not only do I have all these freaking insane buffs, including 24 and 27, let's say what's like 50, 52%, 50, no, 51% all type penetration. Okay, so I have 51% penetration of all types, plus insane crit damage and everything. And uh, now we're going to go and we're just going to. Kill this guy real fast. And we should one-shot him here. Yeah. Look at that one hit. Look how much damage one hit did. 638. Attack two. Attack three. And I'm going to be honest... Even though a lot of, you know, I have her at C6, the majority of the damage going out on those bosses is ultimate damage. It's not from her C6, really. Because if you take a look at her C6, right? Her C6 is really good, but all it does... Okay, in fairness, it does give me an extra 20% resistance penetration. I forgot about that. But other than that, it just makes my basic and skill ultimate damage. That can reduce weapon types, skill types. So the only damage burst to my ultimate is at 20% penetration. But the big thing is this right here, giving this damage, ultimate damage vulnerability mixed with this one here. This, like every single constellation is good. So if you wait and you get these constellations, even if you get here, all this does get in C4 means you will always have 18% crit, uh, crit rate. Which is why her crit rate is so low compared to crit damage. Because that base, right now, at her base, because of her C1, uh, C1 and C4, she has 46.3% crit rate, crit rate base. Now, when I run her in regular teams, I run Fu Xuan. This is the team I run. Because this is the reason why Fu Xuan is so good. Is Fu Xuan's skill is an extra 12% crit rate and an increase of their max HP, plus damage reduction. So, this is, this is actually really great. And I'll probably push for, when she comes out, I'll probably see if I can summon and get her a, a Constellation Arc for resurrection purposes. But yeah, Fu Shuan's really good support. Defensive support, too. I will say that this team so far, I really like this team build. And the big thing about Black Swan is Black Swan's ultimate, right? Which is up a lot actually puts every single form of dot on the characters bleed shear burn and shock which means you don't need another dot character really if you're running her for the purpose of acheron's um for this trait for acheron right for uh this trait right and then you get c2 you only need one so you get that 160. i did save up for i was saving up for acheron for a while to get to her c2 I mean, I spent as well, but I saved up money to spend, too. But I actually run two different teams. This is more of the DPS team. And I will be honest. Overall, I think I like her. I do like her break team more. Sparkle is really good for pure DPS. Because she gives... You know, a crap ton of crit damage with her skill, which is what Broly does with her ultimate. And then she gives a huge damage boost as well. And then her light cone also gives crit rate and crit damage, which is really good. So if you want like a pure on crit damage, crit rate, this is her, yeah. Use Acheron with Jing Lue.
Yeah, I'll be honest. I mean, like, oh, well, shit, I should be starting this girl. I, I didn't think you were right. I gotta start Himiko. I will be honest. You will be doing a lot more damage. Yeah, if you like damage, you need Robin. 100% you need Robin. So let me explain. I'll explain Robin to you real quick, okay? So first of all, Robin has a free-to-play light cone from an event right now. Which is, let me find it, this one here. Which increases her attack by 32%. And then when she pops her ultimate, she her damage increases by 30%. Okay? That's important because during Robin's ultimate, she has attacks. So, the free-to-play light cone for Robin is good. And then if you take a look at her abilities, uh, it's from the cartoon event. I'll show you in a second. But if you take a look at her talent, right? Her talent is a base crit damage buff. Yeah, here's a crit damage buff from her talent, right? Which will go up by about almost 2% every time. So this has about another 6%. So this will be about 20% crit damage. Not as much as Sparkle, to be honest. This one, right here as you can see, is going to be about another 10%, so 50% damage. This is her skill gives you damage. And then her ultimate increases your attack. But then also, she is going to do physical damage based off 102% of her attack. Every time a character attacks. So in other words, it turns your single attacks into double attacks. And because she, everything scales up for her attack... And because this has a 100% fixed crit rate and crit damage, so you can't buff those stats, you just run her attack. That's it. Throw that attack up. Um, no. Bro, all you gotta worry about is attack. That's it. 3.5k or higher. That's all you gotta worry it doesn't matter what, like, every, almost every other thing on the, on your relic is going to Attack is all that matters. Attack is the big one. And she's not even running, like, this one's really good, obviously. This one, I mean, I have this for the effect resistance. I would say attack and effect resistance just for her support build. You got, like, see this double attacks? And then I'm running this one here because of this crit damage boost. And then energy recharge here. Because it has high attack. I do need to get a better headpiece though. That's like the one thing I gotta find is a good headpiece. And I cannot find a good headpiece because they all want to fucking roll crit damage now. And they just run the two piece, two piece attack. So she's easy to build. Free to play light cone, easy to build. A better support. For Acheron teams, since you have an ability character on Acheron teams, like Black Swan or a debuffer, or like maybe Kafka, and she will buff Kafka better than Sparkle will, okay? Sparkle is good for pure damage, so on this team I would keep Sparkle here, right? But, for any team that's going to have a dot character on it, or like this right here, I'll use Acheron with Sparkle. I mean, I'll use Robin with Sparkle, right? Because Robin is much better physical, better damage support, so Don Hang can just be buffed up the butt. Like Don Hang is just gonna be like, <laughs> Don Hang gets like almost six thousand attack. Don Hang is insanely powerful with those buffs on him, and he gets well over hundred percent crit. His crit rate's insane. In fact, I'm actually gonna have to go through and change his shit to have more crit damage than crit rate. Because he has too much crit rate now. And I'm not even running that much crit rate. Look. I, I'm not even running that much. It's, it's just... He gets so much fucking crit rate from everything he's got. His light cone gives him crit rate. Like, if you take a look. If you take a look at his relics, right? Let's just say, can we take a look at the relics buffs? He's only getting... It doesn't show me. Never mind. 6.4... Five point eight, five point one, six point four, two point nine, 
plus eight. Yeah, he's getting 34.6 just from the rel artifacts alone. That's not a lot. He just does so much, but his crit rate just moves so goddamn high. It's insane. And his crit damage goes up high too. Is this an idol's actually crit rate? No, maybe it's here. That's crit damage. I forget, he's, he gets a natural fuck you, you can't CC me. Oh, which one is it? Talent. Oh, he gets a damage boost from his talent. What do you, wait, wait, no, it's a, it is an Eidolon. What's the Eidolon? It's Outroar. Okay, it's going to be the Outroar effect. Or the Righteous Heart? Or the, it's, uh, the outroar, outroar or the Righteous Heart? What was the Outroar effect? Oh, maybe it's here. Oh, here it is. Crit damage. There it is. The Outroar there. Crit damage there. Yeah, so I would say... Okay, oh yeah, Light Cone. Sorry, I'm not going to get that Light Cone. The Light Cone is from this event here. This is where you get the Light Cone from. And I'll give you the Light Cone and everything. Along with a shit ton of crystals, modeling resin. What is it like? One, oh, there's the modeling resin. Oh, yeah. And uh, one... It's like the modeling resin, like two orbs. You get like two orbs turns. So it is really good. But yeah, I would say she's really good. I mean, like, also the fact that she lets your team attack again right away. So you want her to be, you know, you want to get your team's rotations through, then use her to let your team attack again. You know, it's really nice if you need to get that second attack up. And I really think she's going to be good in the swarm because there are so many times in the swarm, right? I'm going to tell you, like, so many times in the swarm where I'm like, they got like 50 fucking hits ahead of me, and I'm just sitting there taking hit after hit after hit. Because of her ability now, I could just say, fuck it. Bloop. Uh, yeah, you should complete the main quest. There's a lot of, there's a, dude, there's a, there is a lot of in-game currency right now. Like, there's a lot. I bought like three multis to get, make, to get closer to Light Cone, but everything else was earned in-game from the events. Plus, I'm gonna be honest, dude. The store is really good, especially if you want to know Acheron's real name. It gives Acheron's name at the end of the store. So if you want to know Acheron's name, her actual real name, you got to complete the story to know. Although, if you haven't guessed already, it's pretty easy. <laughs> my suggestion for builds, okay? If you take a look at all my builds, I'll show you this, right? It's going to be on most of my builds. But if we go for my build, right? Okay, Dawn Hang. Double Harmony support. Or double Harmony with defense and my DPS. Because he is the only DPS he, that this team needs. Her team, she has to have Nihility. So I have her with the Nihility. And then the breaks. This is the break support and the damage support, right? But they're pretty much the same. Because they have to run Nihility. Um, Zayla's a lot like Dawn Hang. She's the only DPS that this team needs. So I run her with double support. Although, I will not take Bronya off this team because it's Zayla. So I won't take Bronya off just because Zayla. Um, as for Jing Lui's team, I actually run her with Blade. Because her attacks take Blade's HP, with, which gives Blade stacks for his talent ability. So I run Jing Lui and Blade together with Sparkle as a support because Sparkle is steer the, still... If you're looking for pure DPS, like for a pure normal DPS, is still the best of the characters. She, I still think she's better than Robin, to be honest. And then this is my farming team here. Clara's really good. This is one that I actually will... Actually, do I... I actually have to have it like this one. I was going to switch it, but I can't because Clara has to have... 
50% defense. And she will only get that if I have both of these two on the team. If she had enough crit rate, I would probably replace her for Robin. And then follow-up teams, of course. She needs to be on the follow-up team. Double up for Topaz. And then for Dr. Ratio's team, because he's built up on, de on again, debuffs. Pretty much similar to uh, Akron's team, right? But she's really buffing. She's going to really buff his damage. So he's... Black Swan will make sure there's enough debuffs for him to get his full potential. And she's just going to make sure he gets extra damage. And then, of course, the sisters. The problem is that... I think I have this... I threw this on... Um, Oh, yeah. There we go. Wait, no, she isn't. Which, which one is she missing? Oh, her chest. That's right. I'm taking her chest back. That was temporary. You don't get to keep her chest. So. Oh, crap. No, that's not what we want. Shit. Yeah, she wants that one. Chest-wise. Okay, she has to run this into boots-wise. Oh, yeah. That actually will work. Yeah, that'll work. Wait, why is she running the follow-up set? Oh, yeah, that's why. There we go. So, I do... I'm going to be using her over... Uh, like, it was really just temporary to test what I have real quick on this. But I am going to be switching him back. To what she should be. Um. I'm going to be honest, I had a bitch of time with this boss. What I ran, I had to run... Fushuan Fushu was really good for this team. So the team that I ran to clear the boss with, okay... Was this team, but I had to use the MC instead of Ron May. Now, she is a break. This is a big break one, right? Breaking is the big key to the boss. So, this is not a bad setup here. Let me actually switch this setup. I'll show you what the setup that I would use if I was you. Crap, one second. Let me show you what I'd do. If I were you, knowing your team... I don't... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said you had, um, actually... Bailu. This is what I would run. Because her breaking ability is just fucking insane. And you want to break, right? Yes, you have to use the MC. But they will give you the story version of him, so he's already built. But it does require you to use the MC, which really made it harder for me. But this is the team I would use because you have your healer here. She's your buffer. Hanya's a really good four-star support, just so you know. Fuck Ting Yun. Ting Yun go suck a dick. And then, of course, because Hanya will take... Um, he also increase the damage that the boss takes. And then Zhu Yi is just a... She's just a breaking beast. Right? Like, she just naturally does a lot of good break stuff. So she has naturally high break effect. You want to build her with break effect. But when she pops her ultimate, like, first of all, she she's very much like Akron where she can break ultimates regardless of whatever with, whatever with her, with her um, ultimate. Just not as good as, as Akron. Um, she also, when she uses her ultimate, she gets an extra 40% break effect. So when you add her alongside him, going to be a really good team to run. So E4, Zhu Yi at E4? Yeah. E4, Zhu Yi is all you need. Zhu Yi E4 is what you want. Hanya, if you were talking about Hanya E4, E4 Hanya is pretty good too.
E2 is still good because it increases their speed. And if you look at the ultimate, right? She increases the speed of a character by her speed. So the faster she is, the better she is for buffing other people, which is why you want Hanya to have high speed. So they can actually make you pop that so that you're giving more attacks with Zhuyi, right? And then, of course, her skill, right, is going to... Apply Burden. And then Danny's with Burden take 31% more damage. So Burn's going to be really good to get that extra damage on him. Alright. And that means that also that's going to be a talent. Yeah. So then if you actually trigger the burden effect, we get the extra skill point. And the good thing about it, she's going to give skill points, right? She's like... Okay. So... MC is like a discount right in May. I'm oh, sorry, right in... Uh, Ruan May. And Harmony is like a... Uh, Honey is like a discount sparkle. Okay. They are really good. For Light Cone, for Honey's Light Cone, I run this one. Because all three of these are going to be really good. Attack, Predemn, Gen Energy, Regeneration. Going to be good for her sister. And for her sister, I run the free five, free to play 5 star. Especially since she's all about breaking enemies. She gets extra 24% damage boost. Right? I need to finish this off at some point. So... This team should do a pretty good job, would be my guess. Going with what you have. Another suggestion could be to use Dr. Ratio. Because he'll be pretty good. Because the boss is going to be weak to his ability. And since he has follow-ups, he's really good as well. So Dr. Ratio would not be a bad one to take in. I'm on JP, man. We can't we can't team up. I'm on JP, sadly. But you can send me you have my Discord, so just send me your teams over Discord. I actually have to get off soon, because it's already getting 6 30. But if you want, dude, we can head up, so hit me up on Discord at some point in time. We can hop on a call. And you can stream your teams and I'll we'll go over it with you now. Probably easier to do that when we can be like, you know, not have like a five to ten second delay between us. Dude, Dr. Ratio's good. People really slept on how good he was. Um, doesn't Dr. Ratio get a natural crit rate boost though? Okay, let me find him. Remember this is an Eidolon. No. Not an Eidolon. Oh, but he does, yes, he does get a natural crit rate boost. He does. So he's saying you have 50% crit rate, right? Hmm. So that would actually put you, so yeah, you have 65% crit rate right now. Um, so your crit rate should be okay. And as for your crit damage, your crit damage would be at 160. So crit damage is 160. I would probably try to get a bit more sets. Uh, my doctor, I'll show you my doctor ratio builds real fast. So, I mean, obviously I'm using this, but a free to play one for him. Or, I mean, if you have it, this one isn't bad either. 
Just because you get crit down, you get into bonus crit damage. So if you have this one, grab this one. Um, he should not be using. Oh yeah, I guess you would, right? Okay. Yeah, you're gonna need another set of these, right? Now, realistically, he just needs crit damage. You need more crit damage than anything else because he gets a base 15%. He's gonna start with a base 20% crit rate, right? So he's gonna have a base 20% crit rate. Plus, he's gonna get an extra 8% crit rate. Okay, so you're gonna have 20 plus 8 plus 8. So, 36% crit rate is his base crit rate, right? So, you're, with that with your 50, you're gonna be at 86% base crit rate. And then, of course, he should be running this one here. The Soul Soda is really good since he's all about follow up and ultimate damage, it's all that matters. So that's good for him, and you get that extra bonus crit rate. So you need to make sure he's over 50 for that. And then, yeah, you need to run, you need to get two copies of this here. Give the high crit damage ones to him. Although, if you want an easier build for Rakaron, realistically, I'm going to be honest, okay? If you have decent crit rate, crit damage, and Acheron, you don't really need the four piece of the Pioneer set. I, for my Acheron, I run two piece, two piece. The break effect and the attack and the reason why is because these rolled really well i mean that they, they rolled what i needed them to roll so i would say that because she can break again because akron's ultimate breaks everything if you have a really good two piece set of either this break effect or this break effect go two piece break two piece uh dot uh this two piece of the debuff damage because realistically she doesn't need that eight percent crit rate or that the 24% crit damage if you're running her with most of your other supports. Like, she doesn't need that in her build. So, yeah, the big issue is that your crit rate's actually going to be too low. Even with that 31, right? If you're running her, actually, if you're running with this set here, right? That'd actually be another 12, so that would put her at 43. So here's the thing, right? You're only getting 8% crit rate with this. So if you get something that rolls like, uh, where is it at? You see this right here? This already beats that crit rate. If I get some, this is why I'm using this, right? This gives me more crit rate than running this set here, really. I would get 1.3. I would get 2% more crit rate if I switch to this. But then the problem is, if I'm running this here, this is just so much better, right? So I'm giving up 2% crit rate for this. And I don't have to worry about the debuffs to get that crit rate buff. Because I want that attack. So I would say that if you have a good... If you have a good crit rate piece that's on the break set it's gonna be like like nine or higher and now you just have like two really well rolled pieces on the break sets do two piece break two piece debuff damage i mean again a big thing to remember is that she does like for her break is good due to the fact that she has the ability to break Things get too dark now. Anyways, I'm going to go and hop off. It's getting dark. My green screen's not even really working that much anymore. So I will catch you later.